We give you praise, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. To you belong our power, Jesus. Whenever I call your name, you make a way. Your name is a strong tower. Your name is a game changer, Jesus, to you belong a power, Jesus, whenever I call your name, call your name you make a way, your name is a strong power, Jesus, your name is a game changer. Jesus, to you belong a power. Jesus, whenever I call your name, you make a way. Your name is a game changer. Jesus, your name is a bulldozer. To you belong our power, Jesus. Whenever I call your name, call your name you make, make a way. way. Your name is a bulldozer, Jesus. Gracious God, we have come this morning. We have come to worship you. Amen. We come to give you praise because there is none like you, Lord. You are the reason for our existence. Amen. We just come to thank you for giving us another day. Thank you and take all the glory for this last Sunday in the month of February 2023. Thank you, Lord. Let your name alone be glorified. Amen. As we sit at your feet to study, for you say, Mary has chosen that which is very good. Sitting at your feet to study this morning, Lord. Enlighten us, enlighten our spiritual mind in the name of Jesus. Amen. I bind strange powers and forces of darkness within the generation of my voice. I command them to go into captivity in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, and take all the glory. In Jesus' most powerful name, we are praised. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, we are looking at God's word that is titled, Servanthood is Condition for Leadership. Servanthood is Condition for leadership. I consider one of the most destructive things on earth to be becoming a leader without being a servant. When somebody becomes a leader without first of all being a servant, such a person is a catastrophe going somewhere to happen. The rudiment of life has stated that you must be a servant before you attain to the position of leadership. And that is the way it works. When you try to pervert it, you will get colossal that has been there will train you so that you can be able to function well at that same field. That's why when you go to university, you see that civil engineers, they train the students of civil engineering. Those that are in pharmacy, the pharmacists, they train them. In medical and surgery, then before you can become one, become a good surgeon, you must be trained by the experts in medical and surgery. The lawyers are the ones that train law students to become lawyers. That is the best practice. Apart from the spiritual practice, which is also more than what we are discussing. So servanthood is something that is a stage that should be done and enjoyed with nobility. 
And that's why the word is coming to us this morning. Servanthood is condition for leadership. Apprenticeship is an authentic window that leads to qualified leadership. In business world, before you can become a businessman, before you can be certified, even in your skill and any vocation, then you must go through an expert. And that expert will certify you and say, yes, it can now be established in this same field. Unfortunately, most people do not want to go through this rudiment, which you can't do without. And that's why we are having confusion. We are having a lot of problems surrounding us because we abuse the rudiment. I pray that God will give you spirit of servanthood this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In spirituality, genuine leaders are regarded as servants. When it comes to spiritual nomenclature in addressing a minister the real meaning of minister is servant when somebody says go and minister to such a person go and serve such a person but today it has been it has been perverted that people see ministers as rulers and leaders instead of servants and ministers parade themselves also as not servants if you go through the bible you see that god that brought about that word minister he sees every minister as a servant and every child of god is a servant servant If you go through the scriptures, as great as Moses was, God saw Moses as a servant. As a servant. As a servant. And Moses also saw himself as a servant. Because without you seeing yourself as a servant, you cannot be able to function well with God. If you go to Numbers chapter 12, from verse 7, Numbers chapter 12, verse 7. My servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all my house. God is the one addressing Moses here. God addressed Moses and said, Moses is my servant. And Moses also saw himself as a servant. He was proud to be a servant unto God. Servant. All of us are servants. Unto God. Every child of God in book of Leviticus chapter 25. Leviticus chapter 25. Verse 25. Leviticus chapter number 25. For unto me. The children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I'm the Lord thy God. God said that the children of Israel were his servants. 
we are his servants. That means every child of God is a servant of God and should be proud to be addressed as such. When God wanted to address Caleb in the book of Joshua, look at how God addressed Caleb in the book of Joshua chapter 14. When the spies, the 12 spies went and 10 of them brought evil news. And uh, Caleb and Joshua were the only ones that saw good in the land. In the book of Numbers chapter, uh, um, Numbers chapter 14 verse 24. Numbers 14 verse 24. Word of God says, But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. My servant Caleb. God said, Caleb is my servant. He has fully and wholly followed me. Servants follow. They don't dictate. They follow the instruction. They follow the directions. They look up to their master. That's why the children of God are called sheep and not goats, not cow. Because sheep follow. Servants follow. They don't tell their master what to do. They are the mercy of their master. So God is expecting us that if we want to get to the realm of leadership, we must have servant traits and attributes. And I pray that I shall come upon you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I realize that servants, is one of the most used word in the Bible. I counted God using servant in King James Version 927 times. Servant. In the word of God, 927 times servant was mentioned in the word of God. And I should tell you how God valued that word, servant. So we need to understand that we God is expecting us to be very loyal and become servants. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 10, what of God talk about how servants should behave. Remember the topic this morning? Servanthood is condition for leadership. Matthew chapter number 10, verse 24. A disciple is not above the master, nor the servant above his lord. A disciple cannot rule over his master. A servant cannot now usurp the power of his lord. We cannot follow God successfully without the character of servanthood. And that's what God is telling us this morning that we should imbibe so that we can become better Christians. In the book of the same Matthew chapter number 20, Matthew, Gospel of St. Matthew chapter number 20, I read verse. Number 24. Matthew chapter 20, verse 24. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. Before I continue, this place 
the sons of Zebedee, James and John, their mom, their mother came to Jesus and told Jesus that I have a, a petition, that you should not deny me the petition I have. And Jesus said, what's the petition? And the woman said that I want two of my children in the kingdom, one to sit at your right hand, the other one at your left hand. And Jesus Christ said, you don't know what you are asking for. It's not for me that to give you such. He said, why are you asking such a petition? He said, you are not, you are not have the power to drink the, the, the cup that I have. They said they have the power. I said, okay, you have the power. You, you, you are going to drink the cup, but it's not left for me. It is my father that decide who sits at my right hand and left hand. And the disciple became angry. All that ten, all the ten disciples became angry with the sons of Zebedee for such a request. And that's what we are reading now. The word of God said, and when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. And Jesus called them unto him and said, you know not the prince, princes of the, uh, of the Gentile exercise dom dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it is, but it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your ministers. Let him be your servant. Is anybody that wants to be great? among the disciples if you desire to be great then you become a servant in verse 27 and whosoever will be chief among you let him be your servant so the best way and the easiest way to get to the top is to become a servant the moment you bring yourself down to become a servant then you're walking your way into leadership because the prerequisite of becoming a leader is for you to serve. So there is dignity in serving. As a servant, you are a man and a woman of nobility and honor, according to the spiritual authority and spiritual conditions. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Also, 23 verse 7 of the same Matthew. Jesus, the master, is still admonishing us. Matthew 23 verse 7. And the word of God says, And greetings in the market to be called men, called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But he, but be not called rabbi, for one is your master, even, even Christ. And all of you are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. He that is greatest among you shall be what? Your servant. So we need to understand that he said in the world is the other way around. Like he said the other side also we have read. In the world is everybody wants to be at the top. Everybody wants to be the one in charge that is issuing order and other people are lawyer. He said but in the spirit that the greatest Somebody that will be the greatest must be a servant. And that's why also in the book of Luke that he began to wash the apostles, the disciples' feet. And when he was washing their feet, they were challenging him, Master, you cannot wash our feet. He was trying to show them that a minister is a servant. Peter said, listen, you can't wash my feet. No, 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 you can't wash my feet. And he told Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. And Peter said, okay, not just my feet. Even, give me bed, let me bed. He said, no, you have taken your bed. You need your feet to be washed. Do as I am doing unto you. And what is he teaching us there? The spirit of servanthood. That we should not just exalt ourselves above measure. 
but we must make sure that we walk according to the spirit and condition of servanthood. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to Philippians. Paul the Apostle was telling us about Jesus because servanthood made Jesus leader. It was through servanthood that Jesus became a leader. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 5. Philippians 2, 5. Say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God had highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that in the, at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It was servanthood that brought Jesus Christ to become a name that the principalities and powers are afraid of. He did not align himself or stop, he did not rub shoulder with God. He placed himself down. He obeyed the cross. He went and suffered at the cross. And he earned this great throne that at the name of Jesus Christ today, every knee shall bow in heaven on earth and beneath the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is God to the glory of God the Father. Why? He took the position of servanthood. And God gratified him and then gave him such name that he is terrorizing the kingdom of darkness. So we should learn and understand that servanthood, the spirit of servanthood, is what we need if we are looking for lifting, if we are looking for office of higher level, then we must go for the spirit of servanthood and then we'll get there very fast. You see, when you check the scripture, all the apostles, all the writers of the Bible, they were they call themselves servants. And the word of God says in the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 1, look at how Titus introduced himself. The Paul now, the, 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 the Paul introduced himself. He said, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to faith of God, elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. That's Paul introducing himself. Look at James, the brother of Jesus Christ, how he introduced himself in the book of James, chapter number one and verse one. James, a servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, praise God. Hallelujah. James say I'm a servant. Paul say I'm a servant. And he did not stop there. If you go to the book of Second Peter, you see how Peter addressed himself. Second Peter chapter one, verse one. Simon Peter. A servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to whom they have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Peter said, I am, an, I am a servant. I am a servant. And not just Peter. Even Jude, the brother of Jesus Christ, also said so also when he was introducing himself in the book of Jude. Jude. You go to Jude 1 verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, was brother of James to them that are sanctified by God and Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Praise God. Yeah. All call themselves servants. So there is no way we can exalt ourselves above our nomenclature. We can't exalt ourselves above our office or position. So God is seeing all of us as servants. 
And that spirit to serve is what we should ask for so that our service will not be in vain. I pray that the spirit of humility to be able to discharge your duty with God throughout your lifetime shall come upon you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Father, this morning we have come, O oh Lord. You have given us this word, servanthood is condition for leadership. Lord, we want to be at the helm of leadership. But give us spirit to serve. Amen. That we might be able to climb to leadership in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take away spirit of pride, high-mindedness from us. Amen. That we might be able to go through the rudiments and be able to totally qualify. That we shall say, my faithful servant, unto us at the end of the day. Amen. Make us, O Lord, to walk faithfully Amen. with all sense of humility in the name of Jesus. Amen. Destroy any arrogance any pride that has been injected into us by Satan to destroy us. Take it away that we might become your children that are totally qualified and our services shall be totally accepted to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for Thank this word. You. Let your name alone be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' most powerful name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, if you have not received Jesus in your life as your personal Lord and Savior, is an opportunity of being a servant. If you are not a child of God, you are not even a servant. You are a slave to sin. Now, what makes you a servant is receiving Jesus in your life as your personal Lord and Savior this morning. You have the opportunity, wherever you are listening to me globally, now you can become a servant. And you can be proud of being a servant of God. Anywhere you are, confess your sins because God does not hear sinners. He does not answer sinners. Ask God to forgive you. Ask Jesus to enter into your life today as your personal Lord and Savior. Ask for forgiveness of sin in every way you have wronged God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for those sins, for being, for being forgiven. Thank you for forgiving those sins, O Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, if you want Jesus in your life, you say this prayer of faith after me. You say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. And on the third day, you rose again that I might be justified. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me from my sins and from Satan. To serve the living God. Today I believe I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I'm a servant of God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray with you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Your grace has found these ones that have received into their lives. Let the same grace preserve them, O Lord. And let it be, Lord, that at the end of the eternal on earth, you shall be able to address them, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Every spirit that is being made manifest in the sons of, 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 of disobedience today is being destroyed in their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Cover these lives today with the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, Lord, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most powerful name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. It is well with you. Amen. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.